Good morning, y'all. Um, today I'm going to be filming my tattoo symbolism video, hence the um, short shorts and the crop top. So, I think I'm just going to do like a linear timeline of my um, tattoos. So we're going to actually start off with my back. Drinking some coffee. It's a nice early morning. It's my day off, so I'm just chilling, being productive. I've done some yoga. I'm doing some laundry, so we're all good in the neighborhood. Um, so yeah, let's start with my back. So when I was 16, I had my best friend Alanis. She's my home girl. Um, essentially, we were like, let's get tattoos, and she got one first, but they were garage-style tattoos, and it was this guy named Ronnie who was really sweet and, like, gave us, like, chill prices for it, um, so I got a crown chakra, because at the time, I was really into yoga, and I really love the chakras, and I still do. I'm not as, I guess, committed to, like, the practice of, like, you know, meditating on my chakras and like focusing on them but now it's more so just like a silent acknowledgement like this is what they symbolize is what they should remind me so i got the crown chakra you can see it so yeah it's a really cute it was just like a line work and i was reading one of my i got this when i was in my sophomore year want to say but yeah, essentially, I was reading a book while he was tattooing me to distract myself from the pain. So that was my first tattoo. Then, um, and to me, like, this, the crown chakra to me symbolizes, like, intuition. I've always followed my intuition. I feel like it's taken me places and helped me kind of just, like, survive. Like, my intuition told me to move out of my hometown. And look where that got me. In a nice space and in a really good mental mindset. So, um, after that, I believe my second tattoo was this guy. I had a best friend, Donna, and I was the president of the garden club in high school, so I'm really into plants. I actually have some plants in my room if you want to check them out. This is Corazon. This one's um, Violeta. I like to name my plants in Spanish, as I will my children, because these are my children. Um, I have some dead rosemary, which I'm actually reviving. It just needs to drain out, because I left it out. But, if you look closely, you can see little green buds. So, it's coming back. It'll take some time. But, I am a witch, and herbal magic is something that I really love. I love plant properties. I love essential oils. So I do feel like my witchcraft is pretty strong when it comes to plants. I can grow a strong plant. So that was my first one. It was a stick and poke, and it was painful, and it's messy, but it just reminds me of the friendship that I had with Donna. She really helped me, like, kind of cope with living in um, the city that I lived in. Um, and yeah, it's always going to be a, a memory of that. So next I got... I believe, this is the problem with, like, having a lot of tattoos. Once you pass, like, three, you're like, which one came first? Um, I believe this one was my second one. And I remember going to the same shop that, because there's this guy named Jose Felix, which pierced my, oh, no, I pierced this. He pierced my nostril and pierced my nipples. So I went there to get this tattoo. It was $80, because that was our minimum. But, yeah, I remember getting, um the dots, and they're six dots, because they were actually supposed to be representative of two things. They're representative of each member of my family, just to remind me that, like, this, I'm a part of a unit. Um, and then also just because I love lists and, like, bullet points. The, but this guy, I'm not going to mention his name, because he honestly was pretty rude and weird, but he essentially, like, didn't... <laughs> I don't like it when tattoo artists believe that just because you're getting a small tattoo, it doesn't really matter. Like, you could tell, because if you look at this one, the top one, let's see if we can zoom in. Let's see. This top one is super messy, and it actually does this when I twist it, but when I look at it, like, myself, it's just a straight line. But yeah, he made it just really messy, and I was like, okay, <laughs> for sure. Like, fuck me, right? So... That was that. 
I believe my next tattoo Ooh, was my cicada actually the cicada being Mexican the cicada in Aztec um, philosophy is or Aztec uh, mythology is actually like um, immortality and just like the constant shedding of skin they were also I was raised in Palm Springs for a lot of my childhood and you can hear them in the summer it gets up to 120 in the summer degrees Fahrenheit and you could hear them like buzzing and they actually help to indicate temperature because the louder they buzz the hotter it gets and you know with 120 they were like screaming so it was actually nice because they would always wake me up and it was really cute because I really hated it at the time but I never really got to sleep in as a kid because either like people were screaming doing shit in the house or like we were just like I was raised in, like, a neighborhood with, like, a bunch of kids, so, like, we were probably all hanging out, so I never really got to sleep in, and the cicada is a good reminder of that. First, I got the outline, and this is when I was working at, like, Chipotle, and then I got it colored in when I moved up here, so that was my next tattoo. That's the symbolism behind that one. I believe my next tattoo was actually the three hearts. I got it at, like, a janky tattoo shop in Cathedral City. I don't mean to be rude to tattoo artists, but, like, these tattoo artists did not give a fuck about, like, what they were tattooing on me. They didn't care about me. They didn't, like, and that's why I want to be a tattoo artist, because I want to be someone that, like, you know, makes every tattoo special and really puts in all their work. Because, literally, this guy was so rude. This tattoo, if you look at it, the black lines are really harsh. And that's because he was literally digging into my skin. I don't know if he was, like, a new artist or just didn't give a fuck, but... The black is really harsh, and I mean, it's cute, but I wanted to get three hearts. They symbolize my siblings, um, but I wanted to get sharp hearts because, like, I don't like round hearts. I think sharp hearts are a lot cuter, but I love the highlight that he put in there, so that's, like, the only good thing about it. But I love all my tattoos, regardless of how they are. Um, next, I believe I got... This autumn leaf was done by a guy named Dylan Smith at the same tattoo shop that did this guy. I love October, I love fall, I love um, Halloween, being a witch, Samhain, um, definitely. But yeah, I really love the colors in this guy. Honestly, it was $13, and for $13, it's probably like an amazing tattoo. I just love all the colors in it. He really like did a great job with that. And he even hooked it up, because he gave me this one. So, I have three siblings, so they're a thorn at my side. Um, also, growing up my hair, I've gotten jokes that I look like Jesus, so that's kind of that. <laughs> but, um, yeah, that's about it with that. And then, let's see. My next tattoo after that, I want to say... I want to say it was actually this bumblebee. So, when I'm... Oh, wait, no. It was this one. Because after Ryan Neri colored this in, this was the first tattoo that I wanted to get done by him, like him making it. And it was actually inspired by Venus Fly by Grimes. And as silly as it sounds, like, I heard that song with Janelle Monet and the line, like, why are you looking at me? Because a lot of people do tend to stare at me being, like, a queer weirdo. Um, that really, like, resonated with me. And also, Venus flytraps are just, I think they're really pretty. I think it's badass that they're carnivorous. And eventually, I'm going to get little flies on top of them. But, um, yeah, in the meantime, that's what I got. And then after that, it was definitely this one. So, my bumblebee. Um, basically, I love bees. You know, we are terrible humans and they're in danger of becoming extinct but you know me loving flowers me being feminine and masculine like I really felt like the bumblebee really symbolized that eventually I'm either gonna get like honeycombs or flowers on my ribs but this was a pretty expensive tattoo I almost wasn't able to pay rent because of it so after that I was like you need to chill with your tattoos because you're about to be broke especially living in San Francisco um after that I got my snake so my snake I think snakes are gorgeous I had a friend Kritzia in high school and we both love snakes he Ryan Neri like that's his kind of signature style and his thing is like snakes and it's actually a funny story because I didn't know this but at the time um
I just like the way that the snake looked. I like the way that it was posing. Apparently, when Ryan drew it up, it was supposed to symbolize, like, I think it's like a Celtic thing, but that specific swirl that the snake's in basically means, like, overcoming obstacles and, like, you know, persevering. So, and with snakes, they're seen as really aggressive, but I think they're beautiful. They're kind of like long puppies. And, yeah, I just, it's also kind of like a warning, same with the bee, like, do not fuck with me because, you know, people love to make faces and they love to make fun of people in the street. But, like, this bee and this snake is here to tell you, like, I might be cute and I might be sweet, but I will literally fight. I had an older brother. I know how to fight. Don't fuck with me. And after that, I think I've gotten... Okay, now... You know, growing as an artist, I really wanted to do my own artist, my own artistry, my own tattoos. So I started doing stick and pokes. So my first one, I believe, was actually, oh, this one was actually the moon. I didn't do this one. One of my friends, uh, Jeremy, did. And he, I believe his Instagram is foot fetish, if you want to check him out. He's a really cool artist. And this stick and poke is super clean, but it's a moon. I have a Venus Cancer... And before I even, like, got into astrology, I just always loved the moon. It would peace. It would peace me. It would make me feel at ease. Um, on harder nights when I was living with my parents, like, I would literally just go outside and stare at the moon. And it brought me, like, some sort of tranquility and ease. So, um, I've always been obsessed with the moon. And this is actually symbolic of the fact that, like, I'm... This is, like, on your ring finger because, like, before you marry me, or if anyone marries me... I'm actually marrying the moon first. So, my symbolism's a little corny, but honestly, I love it. So, my plan with my palm is to get, like, constellations here, and then my natal chart. I'm really into astrology. Sometimes it's a little annoying, but, I mean, I feel like I'm the type of person who's into astrology and, like, brings out positivity in it. I don't like to attack people based off of their signs because, you know, every sign can be just as shitty or great. It's just up to the individual person. So I'll eventually get my Sun, Moon, Mercury, Venus, Mars, and then my constellations. Um, I want to get the Gemini constellation, but the thing with my tattoos is I don't want them to be too obvious. I want them to be a little vague. I want people to, like, get curious with them and, like, ask what that means. So that's where my palm's headed. Um, I tattooed this little sun. It's just supposed to be, like, it's not that good. It's a little messy, but I like it. I think it's cute. It's a little sun, and that's where I'll put my Gemini, because I have a Gemini sun, Leo moon, and I'll tell you all the rest later if I do, like, an astrology video. Um, the next stick and poke that I did was actually this teardrop, and I get a lot of compliments on it. I get so happy when people love it. But it's essentially a teardrop. You know, I'm a really sensitive and emotional person. Um, I've been told all my life that boys don't cry, and we all know that's not true. So, yeah. This eyelash was my first, like, major project. I do have to kind of finish this last teardrop, but I need to get, like, a biohazard kit um, to get my needles and put them in. So, until then, I'm just chilling on my tattoos. Oh, um, I do have these little dots. So, with these dots, this is, like, the thinnest form. These are getting thicker. They're eventually going to form one solid line. So, it's going to get thicker, thicker, probably, like, starting to blend into each other, and then my thumb will be, like, one solid line. Basically, the symbolism behind that is becoming whole, but also falling apart, because that's just how life is. And, yeah. Oh, and then my last one... Just doing a quick scan of my body. Oh, I have a couple more on my thighs. I'll show you in a second. The last one, the last couple are this T. It's Old English. It's going to say T-R-A because I've noticed, like, whenever I'm thinking, I'll just have my hands like this. So A-R-T, art. I'm an artist. I love art. I do believe that I myself am art and people are capable of being art. So that's um, that. And then the last part is this Kiss It Better tattoo with Picasso's Guernica. Um, so this one was done by one of my homegirls, Vicky, which is actually one of my friends of Kess. So they're all artists. 
Um, and I just love the way she did it. She did it so quick, and she was so, like, precise. Kiss It Better was a stick and poke that I did. Um, I believe I spoke on it in my, um, piercings and tattoo tag, but it's essentially just, like, I love Rihanna. She's really been someone who, like, is, like, a role model that, like, you really don't have to stay stagnant, and you can do whatever you want, and you can constantly change and be a bad bitch all in one, so... And Kiss It Better, I actually love the way that the Sick and Poke turned out because it was when I was first getting into them. And it's a little messy, but that's what I wanted because, like, you know when kids hurt their um, knees and they're like, Kiss It Better? I wanted to look like someone was, like, crying and, like, basically falling apart. And the little heart is, like, you know, just a symbolism of um, just, like, give me, give me love and, you know, help me and you know, nurture me and protect me, because it's like, I am someone who is always helping others, but I also have learned that you need to demand that in return, because if you're just helping everyone and you're not getting any help back, then you are really just um, wasting away. So I believe that's my tattoo symbolism video. If you guys have a favorite tattoo, definitely let me know. And my next planned tattoo that I know in the near future Around, like, the base of my neck, I want it to be slightly curved, but it's going to be Old English, and it's going to say enamorado, which means in love in Spanish. It's going to be red Old English, um, and it's going to be, like, at my neckline, so, like, you can barely see it. I don't want it to be, like, on my neck, but I was going to get it on Valentine's Day, but then I ended up going to Disneyland instead, so. But yeah, hope you guys' day is great. Bye.